No, what's the call? Uh, people fell from their balcony um, and uh, they're stuck under a table right now. All right. Conscious now or not? Yes. Okay, good. Thanks. I'm a veteran filmmaker and also a journalist, but for the last 22 years I've had a sort of special calling. I volunteer as an EMT advanced medic on Megin Davida Dome, which is the EMS service in Israel. It's also known as MDA. We've just been called to a mass casualty incident. The balcony has collapsed not too far from where we are. That means that there could be several people seriously wounded. and run what's called a, a BLS ambulance, a basic life support ambulance, but we also cover very advanced cases as well. All it takes is a fall from just 10 feet to break bones, to puncture vital organs, and to be paralyzed. There is no system in the world that has 29,000 volunteers, medics, at various levels of training, working with 25,000 staffers in an EMS across the country. Volunteer medics who happened to be nearby were alerted. They got there within a couple of minutes and gave crucial first assistance before ambulances even arrived. They informed senior paramedic of what's going on and now he's controlling the flow the most serious injured is taken first, and others are then moved out. Okay. Both, both, it's our ambulance. They're professional. We have more ambulances per capita that can reach people than most countries around the world because there are so many trained volunteers. I'm over 60. Many of the people who work with me are also over 60. We often work with well-trained high school students, and you can ask the question, would you trust your life with teenagers working with a senior medic over 60 years old? And I can tell you the answer is definitely yes. Give me indication of vital signs, etc. Yeah. Pulse 91, blood pressure is now taken. Is she conversant? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. There's too much movement for the blood pressure, so I'm going to take it manually. Just a little bit of pressure. 130 over 70. If her blood pressure drops, it could be from a bleed. If her saturation's not right, she might need more oxygen. So she's constantly monitored till we get to the hospital. Nadina, we're almost at the end of the day, okay? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Can you guys talk to her? Keep her calm. Yes, okay, Ladima Dina. Come as man at Barrett. Arba Shani, Mata Zapo Barrett. Mat? 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 Mat
Even though they're 16 and 17 years old, they know how to reassure her that she's in good hands. She's in stable vital condition, meaning her all her essential organs are working right, but they still don't know if she's got a fracture in her back. She still has to be immobilized. that a 17-year-old has this kind of responsibility makes us teenagers cherish that responsibility. We do a lot on the tablet. Whenever we have a patient, we go through all of his information through the tablet, write every, like all his details and what happened for the doctors later to read. You're okay with putting this together with the cup of matter and all that? I'm 16. I just celebrated my birthday. I remember on my birthday, so I had a shift, and I had a... 10 years old girl who died. Um, she was she had cancer, so the parents pretty much knew that she was going to die. It was like a pretty difficult case. She had a twin sister, and I also have a twin sister, uh, so it was like a bit rough. Here, why don't you take a look at the Daphne and see if you got to wake somebody's heart up? We can do it. The real lesson of this is. Teenagers should be asked to take on more responsibility, not less responsibility, because by rising to the occasion, they also get essential tools for life and how to deal with challenging situations. Irene Kabha is a close friend, an Arab paramedic woman, conservative, wearing a hijab. She's actually managed to show that you can retain your conservative values and progress professionally within this complex Jewish Arab society. She works closely with two volunteers, two Jewish volunteers, Arye, who's the driver in her ambulance, and Yael, who also works as a medic. They run an advanced life support ambulance, a very advanced system to deal with very difficult cases. אם הוא היה לבד עד שהיינו מגיעים, בלי הכונן, יכול להיות שהוא היה מפסיק לנשום. וברגע שיש את הכונן, הוא היה באמת ערני לנשימות שלו, והוא נתן לו חמצן עד שהגענו. ובדרך כלל אחרי דום נשימה יש דום לב, אז זה היה חשוב מאוד שהיה לפנינו מישהו, כי יצאנו מרחוק ולקח לנו איזה עשרים ומשהו דקות להגיע. את 
50 year old patient. We were originally dispatched for a uh, suspected uh, suicide. Initial assumption was there was a possible overdose because both his pupils were extremely narrow. So we treated him with an antidote for opioids, Narcan. And the first dose made a small difference, second dose made a little bit of a more of a difference, but not enough to uh, cause him to regain consciousness. Hi, Shalom. אני מביאה לכם בן חמישים שהוא מחוסר הכרה, חבר שהיה במקום אמר שהוא כנראה צרך תרופות, הוא לא יודע מה, כמה הוא יציב, הוא הגיב לנרקן, אבל באיזשהו שלב כבר הוא לא מגיב, הוא עדיין מחוסר הכרה. הוא עדיין, הוא עם חמצן מהסטורציה, אבל הוא נושם קצת לא הכי לא טוב. אתה בבית חולים, לא לדאוג. אנחנו פה איתך. אתה בידיים טובות. עובדה שאנחנו מצילים חיים ביחד. אנחנו מתמודדים עם מקרים מאוד קשים ביחד. אנחנו עוברים הרבה דברים ביחד. זה, זה גורם לנו להיות יותר קרובים ויותר מבינים ומכילים אחד את השנייה ורוצים להישאר אחד עם השנייה. יש לנו חוויות שהן עוצמתיות שאנחנו עוברים ביחד. Many of the volunteers, like me, are over 60, and there's no cutoff time for retirement. Abba Richman is a close colleague of mine and a good friend. At 72, he's one of the oldest and one of the most active medics in MDA. We're going to a 36-year-old pregnant lady. She's in a health clinic, a public health clinic. She has abdominal pain. Uh, she's obviously being seen by a doctor, and the doctor is apparently requesting that she be transported to hospital, and that's why we're on the way. I've retired. I could have spent all my days, I can spend all my days sitting at home, going to the beach, chatting to my wife, but that would not give me satisfaction. It would not enable me to fulfill my mission in this life. And my mission in this life, as I've apparently uh, come to realize, is helping people. And the best way I know in order to help people is through my Gendivida Dom. Abby, what's the blood pressure? 101 over 47. It's a little low. Ask her if it's usually that when she's pregnant. Do you usually have low blood pressure? Yes. And the pulse is okay? What's the pulse? Pulse is 102, strong and okay. regular. Good. For a 72-year-old to be able to do a, an eight-hour shift, to be able to take equipment up and down stairs, to be able to lift a patient from their third floor down to the ambulance, is all a question of mind over matter. So if I ask myself, am I able to do this, and I say yes, then there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to do it. And this is true for anybody. Anybody. Okay. Cases do bond us together. <laughs> actually talking about them a lot in order to process and not only what happened to the patient in an objective sense, but also how we feel about what happened to the patient. Yeah. 
כמו האחיה שהיא דיברה עליה, שהיא כן, לא שוכחת עד היום. רק כן. שתביני שהמתנדב שלי עד היום לא שכח את זה, וכל תקופה כותב על זה משהו. הוא... המקרה, המקרה תביעה של הילד בבריכה, ואני מגיעה, ואביחי יגיע איתי. היה לי ברור שה, שהמקרה אבוד מדי, כי הילד היה בצבע נוראי, הוא היה כבר נפוח. אבל ידעתי שחמש דקות אנחנו יוצאים משם. אין, לא. כאילו... לא היה שם... של ילדים זה, זה, זה דבר נורא. נוראי. היה לי לפני שנתיים, זה היה שנתיים וקצת, בהרצליה גם. זה משהו ש... יצא מוות בהריסה כזאת, שהילד היה מאוד גדול, שנה וארבע, שזה גדול, אבל שם העניין שהגעתי בתור אמבולנס לבד, זה סוף משמרת. הילד נראה קופי כמו הבן שלי, והם היו באותו בוי. גיל. הם, כאילו ברמה שהם היו בהפרש של uh, עשרה ימים בין ימי הולדת שלהם, בשנייה בוי. שעשינו טפסים. בוי. זה המשפחה uh, חרדית, אז הגיע בדיוק הרב של הקהילה שלהם. ש... רק שתדע שזה איתם... מאוד עוזר להם. כן. בתחילה, בתחילה, כאילו זה האמונה שלהם, הם מתחילים, כאילו, אמונה אצל כל בן אדם, לא משנה במה אתה מאמין, זה הדבר הראשון שמחזק אותך. לא משנה במה אתה מאמין, באבן, באלוהים, בטבע, לא מעניין. העיקר שיש לך אמונה מסוימת, זה מאוד מחזק אותך בזמנים הקשים האלה של... רגע, בוא נקבל את זה, כי זה אובדן מטורף. הרב היה שם איתם מתי שאמרנו להם סופית ש... שמפסיקים החייאה. <אח> זה הרגע של... אני חושב שכל השכונה שמעה את הצרחה של המשפחה <אח> שם. <אח> About 20 years ago, a bus like that going down this route stopped just down there. At that time, a suicide bomber blew himself up, killing 10 people and wounding about 50. A couple of years earlier, right here, at this building construction site, there was a restaurant called Moment. People were enjoying themselves. Another suicide bomber walked into here and killed 11 people and wounded 50. Their names are etched right over here in their memory. Those suicide bombings also brought a pressing concern for EMS services in Israel, especially for MDA. Just a kilometer and a half or two from the Moment Cafe is King George Street. It's the center of Jerusalem. There's a bakery over there, but two decades ago, it was a pizzeria called Sbarro. A suicide bomber blew himself up and 15 people were killed. And about 100 others were strewn about this square, seriously wounded. Again, there was that big problem about how to get there quick enough. Today would be a completely different solution because of the app I have on this phone. If I was around here, me and many other volunteers would have been alerted instantaneously. It would send out an alert like this. I would see the address, the fact there was a suicide bombing. I would answer I'm in departure. Then I would press the blue button that would navigate me right to the scene within 40 to 50 seconds. There will probably be 30 or 40 other people with similar qualifications who will get the same message. And within less than a minute, people could be on the scene and save lives. Thank you. 
ועוד הג'ינג'י זה בכלל עושה את ה... מה יש פה? מה זה קשור בכלל? חפש מה קורה שם? טוב, אוקיי. מאור! אני מקווה שאני הולכת לפי... אני פשוט הולכת אחרי... היי, מה קורה איתכם? 194. היי, שלום לך. מה שלומך? מרגישה טוב? כן? טוב, טוב. טוב? אני רק אשמע את הריאות שלך, טוב? נבדוק אותך. זה היה מאתגר להיות פרמדיקית ערבייה עם כיסוי ראש דתייה בתוך מגן דוד במדינה הזאת, היא מגוונת ומורכבת באמת. מי מקודם אמר שכואב לה בחזה? היא אמרה לכם את זה? היא סימנה, היא לא אמרה בחזה, היא שאלתי אותה בעלית, היא לא, אבל סימנה על החזה. הבנתי. אוקיי, אוקיי, אוקיי. בהתחלה ממש לא היה פשוט גם לערבים לראות אותי. במעמד הזה, כי זה, אנחנו, אנחנו ממש מעט שהן ערביות עם כיסי ראש ו, ו, ועובדות כפרמדיקיות, לא כאילו לא יש כזו, כמוני עוד אחת. יש עוד דירות שנפגעו? אני אבדוק. אני אבדוק. בהתחלה הם, בגלל שאני קטנה קצת, אז בהתחלה הם לא התייחסו אליי, גם הרופאים. כשהייתי שואלת אותם בשביל מסירת חולה, אז הם היו מסתכלים על הגבוה ביותר ועל הגבר. זה היה מאוד מאתגר להגיד להם, היי, אני פה, כאילו, תסתכלו עליי, אני זאתי ששואלת אתכם, אז בואו תדברו אליי. בלניצה? את לא רוצה בלניצה? אוקיי. זה היה מאוד מאתגר, כי הייתי מאוד... גם עדינה ושקטה כזאת, שהיא לא, לא חושבת שיש לה את הזכות לדבר בכלל. אז לקח לי המון זמן לגבש את הדמות הזאת שאומרת, אני פה, ובואו תתייחסו אליי. אתה מרגיש טוב? פשוט קרה שריפה, והם קראו לנו לבדוק אותך. יא, נראה לי רוסית, בואו. רוסית? רוסית דברית? אה, הנה, אתה דובר רוסית. בהתחלה הייתי מאוד נלחמתי על המקום, ואז אחרי זה קיבלתי אותו. ראיתי שאני מקבלת אותו בלי להתאמץ. אוקיי. מה שלומך, גלינה? בת 80 הייתה בשריפה בתוך הדירה, לא שאפה עשן לדבריה. הפכתי מילדה ממש כזאת מסכנה שמפחדת שאין לה מקום, למישהי שהיא יודעת שיש לה מקום, גם אם היא ערבייה, גם אם היא כיסוי ראש. יצאת החוצה. כן. אני אאזין לך ל... בשקילה, אני היה בשקילה. אוקיי, אוקיי. פעם פחדתי שזה יסתיר אותי, זה הבליט אותי ברמה שאני מסתכלת ואני אומרת, אני מיוחדת. גם אני לא יכולה לעשות טעויות, כי יגידו פרמדיקת ערבייה עם כיסוי ראש, ארין. בואי תנשימי עמוק. הכל בסדר, נרמל נא. טוב? موطمئنا <تصفيق> يا رب العرش المجيد ولو مزمان بشبوع آخرون هيا لي شيفيو لي بطوع بين 27 شيم هم بشوت يروبو بكل أغوف مشو هيا تحت ابتخاد خزي وتيبول انتنسيفي أبل هو دعين لو سراد وني يعني شباب اللي بعيت زي كيف أموك وزي باحد إما تغوتر بباروخوف بأوتو ومتأمت مشو الخنية ويخول بشوت لشلوف ولعروق وتخاك יש תחושת פחד איומה, פחד נוראי, ו... ופשוט לפעמים זה משתק. Volunteer first responders play a big role in COVID vaccinations, especially in Arab towns, where Arabs are very reluctant to get vaccinated. We go there to give them a shot. Israel has led the world in vaccinating quickly an entire country. And unlike in other countries where you're expected to come to a center to get a shot, many people don't show up. 
and MDA ambulances and mobile teams move from old age homes to isolated villages to make sure that people get vaccinated who can't easily get to some sort of center. And the thousands of volunteers who gave jabs to people vastly increased the number of people who basically got vaccinated. We take medics who are fully trained and instead of having them open a certain number of ambulance shifts per week, we give some of them motorcycles or other forms of transportation that they take home. In a busy city like Tel Aviv, a motorcycle can go from point A to point B several kilometers extremely quickly and that enables the patient to receive quality medical care much closer to the time of the incident and then the ambulance can arrive a few minutes later to begin transporting the patient to the hospital. And even though I don't have a motorcycle at home, many times the MDA app has located me. At three o'clock in the morning, my MDA app goes ringing that there was a cardiac arrest in our vicinity. I immediately drove to the location where the cardiac arrest was reported and started CPR on the patient. And I performed CPR for about 10 or 12 minutes before the first ambulance arrived. And I'm sure that being there and cutting out those first 12 minutes where otherwise the patient would not have received medical treatment definitely improved their chances of survival. Except for MDA, I have my day job, which is at Ichelov Hospital. I'm the chief technological officer of the medical simulation center. We want to create artificially intense situations, many times with mannequins or with medical actors, in order to recreate real situations that they might encounter. הסימולציות שלכם היום, אתם עובדים עם שחקנים רפואיים, כמה דגשים חשובים. קודם כל, השחקנים יודעים לעשות יותר מרק להגיד שורות. הם יכולים לנהל איתכם דו-שיח תוך כדי הסימולציה, וזו המטרה. We're taking people that maybe until now never thought of the aspect of communication skills in the day-to-day -day work, and we're integrating it. אני רוצה לחזור אליה, עכשיו אני לבד פה כל כך הרבה זמן, אין לי מי לדבר. An elderly uh, individual who'd be in a hospital ward and he has a medical condition which warrants amputating his leg. And the physician's job at the baseline is to try and convince the patient to make the correct decision in order to save their lives. <laughs> When I volunteer at MDA, a lot of the focus we have is on communicating with the patient because we don't have that much of a large arsenal of clinical tools to use. And when I work here and I see how many additional tools a physician has in exams and consults and a lot of times, the simple connection and talking to a patient and communicating with them kind of gets drowned out. And today, thankfully, we have complete courses and they're integrating into the training process. And I think this is making a big difference. Tell me where we're we going, what's the, what's the call? We're going to a mall, someone who fainted. If I understand correctly, this is outside, right? Um, the person has fainted outside. Yeah. Okay. But next to the small mall. He's calling to right. Yesh Hadley Gold. Okay, have you heard about it? Yeah, I'm 
יש לך איזה מחלות שאני צריך לדעת עליהן? משהו שקשור לחרדה לוקח תרופה מסוים? מתי הפעם האחרונה שזה קרה? לפני שלוש שנים? לא, היה לי פעם אחת, כאילו, כן, ההתקף האחרון שהיה לי החלק, זה היה לפני שלוש שנתיים. אוקיי. 96. What's really important in this situation is TLC, Tender Loving Care. And volunteers who don't put in an everyday grind are much more receptive to giving TLC and much more patient in giving empathy to uh, some of the patients who are more agitated, nervous, and concerned or scared than really sick or injured. And this is very important for the patients. You guys work so much more with the bags than I did. Let me tell you, I'm sure you're much more proficient than I am. In many ways, for me to volunteer an MDA is a calling. It's a calling to help people without expecting anything in return. Most of the cases we get are not super emergencies. They're older people who have to go back to the hospital maybe to change a catheter, or they need to get chemotherapy, or they have to get a new drug and they're not responding well to a cardiac problem. Yeah. It's a slow drive. It's not very exciting. But the fact that you can hold their hand, that you can tell them they'll be okay, that we're going to be with them until they see the doctor, that you can tell them that their breathing is not something that's threatening their lives because they're so scared. These are very, very important things that we do as volunteers. It's an act of tender, loving care. It's an act of pure giving. Never, never tell a patient everything's going to be okay because sometimes it just isn't going to be okay. But I always tell them, you're in good hands and we're going to take care of you. Being a senior citizen, being above the age of 60, gives one a more empathetic view and our way of treating a person is much more respectful than a 20-year-old. When I go to a 90-year-old lady in a house who's not feeling good, I treat her as my grandmother. If I have a woman giving birth in the ambulance, I look at her as if I were treating my wife. And if I have an accident victim, a 19-year-old kid on a motorbike, I consider him as my son. We have enough life experience to be able to look at people and treat them in not only medically, but also psychologically, and, and give them a helping hand, a soothing arm, a smile, and that is really very reassuring for them. Volunteering for MDA doesn't come without its emotional cost. There are great tragedies. There's the stress of dealing with deaths. Sometimes it's traffic accidents or children or terrorist attacks. And then during this whole crisis over COVID, there's the stress of becoming ill, of getting sick. We were called to many, many COVID cases where we have to don the full protective gear and be in it for hours at a time. I went out with teenagers. It's stifling, it's hot, it's very difficult to move around in. And always at the back of your mind when you're dealing with a COVID patient is, can I get sick? Can I get ill? Will I, my life be threatened? Irene just got her master's in art therapy and she's trying to bring into MDA a very novel way of dealing with stress. stress. 
אמנם אני יודעת שלכם קשה לחבר את הרגש לגוף, כי אנחנו במין של הכחשה כלשהי, שקצת קשה לנו לסלול לרגשות, ואנחנו חווים כל מיני טווח של רגשות, מעצב, שמחה, התרגשות, אקסטזיה. אני רוצה שנצא מפה עם קצת כלי לדעת, לאבחן, מתי אני מרגיש טוב, מתי אני מרגיש לא טוב, ומה אני עושה עם זה. אני רוצה שתנשמו עמוק. תוציא את הנשימות כמו שאנחנו מלמדים את המטופלים שלנו שהם בהתרגשות. תוציאו אותם ארוך, 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 כאילו אנחנו יושבים בקשית, ותוך כדי נחשוב על מקרה שמאוד עצבן אתכם, מאוד הלחיץ אתכם, והוא עדיין בזיכרון. וזה מאוד חשוב לי, כי ברגע שאנחנו מרגיעים את הגוף שלנו, אנחנו יכולים להרגיע את הנפש שלנו. I know this Arab medic Summer was called to a case where a son tortured his mother to death. Mm-hmm. זה ממש היה לי עמוק עמוק בתוך הנפש. אז בעצם כשאתה מספר את הסיפור הזה עכשיו, מה אתה מרגיש בדיוק בגוף? מרגיש צמרמורות, מרגיש לא טוב, לא טוב, פשוט לא טוב, מרגיש רע עם זה. סוג של אני רוצה לצעוק, להגיד משהו, אבל זה אין, אין איזשהו משהו מדויק שאני רוצה להגיד או ספציפי. From my experience, it's very rare that an Arab man, an Arab medic like Summer, would confide such vulnerable feelings to Irene, a conservative Arab woman. It's unusual in their society that such trust could be built between a man and a woman who aren't married, who aren't relatives. And in that sense, Irene is making really special progress. I think in MDA people come together for a common cause which is very central to what they believe in in this case saving lives it kind of blurs the differences and brings to front stage what brings us together The second you give people something to rally around, I think it's very easy to go past what initially makes us different. יש סינוס, יש סינוס. אבל זה סינוס הכי קל, יש נשימה, הוא חי. הנה, אני עושה לו אחרי עמית פה לפה. We were called to the severe car accident in Taibu, which is an Arab town. <laughs> the driver was a female patient who was also pregnant, semi-conscious. The patient had a past history of diabetes, which could mean that there was a sugar-related incident or something combined uh, with stress. אני חושבת שאני עושה שינוי באיך להסתכל לאישה, מבחינת איך מגזר ערבי מסתכל על האישה הערבייה הצנועה עם כיסוי ראש ודתייה. אני חושבת שהתחלתי לעשות שינוי עם 
האיום שהם מרגישים, שערבייה מתפתחת ויוצאת לעולם החיצוני לעוד תפקידים שהם לא, לא עשו אותם עד היום. אז הם רואים שאני יכולה להצליח, ואני עושה את זה גם עם שמירה של מנהגים. אז אני חושבת שאני עושה פה שינוי גדול בתפיסה. I think that the magic that mixing everybody in that small box where you know that speaking about politics it's not going to be good and you speak about the thing that you love and and the, the thing that connect you and we forget for a bit that in Israel you have all the problems of friction We try to concentrate on first saving life, second having friendship. <laughs> Yael, who works with Arin, is also trained to instruct a course called the first seven minutes, and it has great demand in Israel and also internationally. Hey, you, okay. you can you help me? Come, 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 fast, fast. Help, help us, help us, help us. Uh, come on this spoon, please. Uh, come on this spoon. So she has gone to Europe to teach a course and how any individual who gets some basic training can make a big difference in saving a life. What can you do if you see someone that just uh, collapsed, or if it's a car accident, or if it's a terror attack? We teach basic bystanders to know how to act, how to save lives the first minutes after an event. It's something that we can, we can, we give to, to society. Can someone help us, help us? We had an MCI, it's a mass casualty incident. It's also for car accident. You saw now four cars and we have in each car three people. You already have 12 injured. What do you need to do? What can you do? How can you ask for the others to come and help you? I wonder if the volunteer MDA system, the first responder system, whether that would work in the United States or Canada. Canadians and Americans are used to the idea that you wait the 20 minutes for the ambulance to come with the professional paramedics, but we know here with the first responders that that sometimes could be too late. It would mean thinking out of the box for Canadians and Americans to accept someone to knock at their door when their loved one might have a heart attack, coming with a defibrillator and say, I can help you. But thinking out of the box may be the key to saving more lives in North America. Yeah.